I am speaking as co-coordinator of the, Internet, the Civil Society Internet Governance Caucus, but I am also Internet Governance Capacity Building Program Online Course Coordinator for Diplo Foundation, two different civil society hats. Some of us represent government, business, academia, civil society in different or overlapping areas of our lives or at different times of the day. But in the end, we all take off our hats and we are members of society, individuals, internet users. We are parents worried about our children's online safety. We are internet users concerned about the security of our financial data. We are citizens seeking to protect our basic rights to access, freedom of expression, and information. Multi-stakeholderism, recognized in the Tunis Agenda 2005, was the biggest conceptual achievement in WSIS. It was accepted as a guiding principle for internet governance and the IGF, in contrast to the intergovernmental stakeholder approach previously applied. This success demands that the IGF continue with its core stu structure basically unchanged while emphasizing the further application of enhanced cooperation. The civil society in each of us worries about our human rights, about child porn, and about being scammed. We worry about finding information in our native languages. We worry that the richness and diversity of our traditions will be replaced by a new SMS text language. The Civil Society Internet Governance Caucus asks that we continue to work on these issues together by appropriately applying the principles of the basic human rights instruments, such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and supporting the principle of indivisibility of rights highlighted in the WSIS Declaration of Principles. This enhanced cooperation is not just a process that will address the, issue, the issues of critical internet resources. It also allows the IGF to set a precedent to address all global internet governance issues. It includes the imperative of developing policies in addition to the IGF process, a process which is oriented towards taking wide inputs, deliberating on options, and feeding into the policy developing processes. These two actions are complementary, though clearly distinct, and both must be achieved. In this regard, we salute the ECOSOC report E-2009-92, adopted last month, that makes these two points. We also note happily that the once stalled process of enhanced cooperation is now being prioritized, as was mandated by the WSIS, through planned open consultations later this year. We acknowledge the achievements of the Commission on Science and Technology for Development, Working Group on the uh, IGF Reform, and express our desire and commitment to work closely with it, as well as the Association for Progressive Communications and other civil society initiatives. We continue to support the regional IGF meetings with closer focus that will address problems at every level, spreading the impact of the IGF around the world in physical meetings and including the themes discussed regionally. We support the unique model of dynamically engaged hubs and remote participation as innovative developments of the IGF. Local meetings and remote participation have increased inclusion to the point where this IGF has individual remote participants engaged online around the world and with an unprecedented 33 local hubs registered. We reiterate the importance of capacity development to improve inclusion, to allow us each to build the resources and knowledge necessary to reach our goals. Finally, we invite all of you to join civil society in addressing specific internet governance issues, such as net neutrality vis-a-vis -vis wireless internet. We invite progressive civil society and other players to make themselves clearly heard, working towards a user-centric, a people-centric internet. We must continue the IGF model of providing a new set of means and processes for openness 
and participation that will become the default global standard. Thank you.